Christ is risen, alleluia. Is risen indeed, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our worship on the fourth Sunday of Easter, traditionally celebrated as Good Shepherd Sunday, because the psalm is always the 23rd psalm, and the gospel is always from John chapter 10, in which one way or another Jesus identifies himself as the Good Shepherd. We'll hear him actually say those words in our reading this morning, and with help from our prayer of the day, we will see that embedded in that declaration is a call for us to join him in that shepherding work so that he might fulfill his promise of gathering all into his healing and life-giving fold. Please make sure that you have signed the guest pads and pass them along and greet those of whom you are worshiping. A couple of announcements. Thank you again, Mizu, for leading us and inspiring us in our singing and worshiping. Um, I would ask that you make sure that all cell phones are turned to silent or turned off so we are not interrupted this morning. Um, we received about $200 from the Give Back Night at Leeds Public House, so thank you to everybody who participated in that. Um, we, there will be coffee hour downstairs after the service. We hope to see you there. And I want to point out that next Sunday there will be a special coffee hour honoring Jean Kleinschmidt for her 90th birthday, so we hope that you will plan to be with us for both of those. And then finally, after many, many months of waiting and discussing and negotiating and uh, struggling, I think it is with great joy and thanksgiving that I can announce to you that on Thursday, we closed on the sale of the school building. So everything is now official. We will provide a full detailed report about the details of the closing at our congregational meeting and potluck, which is Sunday, May 19th, following this service. And we'll have more to say about that meeting as the weeks come by. But uh, lots of hard work involved in this, and thanks be to God that it is finally over. With that, we are ready to begin with our order for confession. As you are able, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Because God knows our hearts and does not condemn us, we may therefore confess our sins with confidence and hope. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not laid down our lives for others. We have refused help to our sisters and brothers in need. We have loved one another in word and speech only, and not in truth and action. We have not loved one another as Christ has loved us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, strengthen us with your spirit, and grant us the will and courage to bear the fruits of your mercy and grace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. As you have asked, so you receive. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading is from Acts. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from 1 John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the words, goods, and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord.
according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and runs away and leaves the sheep and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice so there will be one flock and one shepherd. Because of this, the Father loves me, that I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The image of the Good Shepherd is a powerful one. For example, this mural has engaged the faith and hope and imagination of countless members here down through the decades. For many people, the 23rd Psalm is their favorite passage in all of Scripture. The picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is one of the earliest ones we have in Christian art. It has inspired theologians and preachers and poets and musicians and hymn writers for over 20 centuries. But it is not an end unto itself. Jesus uses this language as a way to call us to live as Easter people, as his sheep. For just as the resurrection did not end with the empty tomb, neither did his work. I have other sheep, he says, that do not belong to this fold, and I must bring them also. Jesus cannot and will not rest until all the lonely and lost, the frightened and the hurting, are gathered into his care. And each day he wants to shape us to join him in that work. Our prayer of the day laid out the call. O Lord Christ, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you. That's the Easter life. He did indeed seek us out <clears throat> all the way to death, hell, and the grave. And he found us and strengthened us and restored us. And now he transforms us from sheep into shepherds who join him in his unending work of gathering the lost, the sick, the poor, and the dying into his abundant fold of life. How much we need to hear that call of Jesus and his promise that is behind it. At a time when the church in North America and Europe is diminishing and dying, Jesus says, I'm not done yet. But that may be difficult for us to believe. For all of the indicators, all of the surveys, all of the statistics seem to point to the continuing death decimation of the flock. Just last week, a report was published in which uh, the number of Americans who said that their faith was the most important thing in their lives dropped from 72% to 53% in only 10 years. The demographers were stunned at the rapidity of that decline. Over 30% of Americans now identify themselves as having no religious affiliation whatsoever. Based on over 50 years of declining membership and worship attendance, two of our own Lutheran seminary professors recently published a report that said, will the ELCA, our church body, be gone in 30 years? 
And essentially they said yes. And there's nothing we can do to reverse that decline. But we don't need outside reports and statistics to drive home that truth for us. Each year, our biggest attended services on Christmas Eve and Easter drop by 20 or 30 from the previous year. We all have family members, siblings, or children who were baptized and confirmed and raised here who no longer attend, grandchildren and great-grandchildren who are not baptized, friends and neighbors and co-workers with whom we grew up here whom we never see again. My own wife and children do not attend. So we cannot help but wonder and worry about their and our future. And Jesus says, trust me, no one will be left behind. For that is why he laid down his life, not to satisfy the wrath of God or make some kind of cosmic payment for the penalty of sin to a vengeful and bloodthirsty father, he freely gave up all that he had and was and is in order to show that his love and the Father's love knows no limit, that they will go to any length, overcome every barrier, every obstacle, in order to gather all into their life-giving fold and love. And just as he laid down his life on the cross, so on Easter morning he did indeed take it up again. And having gathered us into his arms, stretched out on the cross, and brought us with him through death, hell, and the grave. Now he joins us and raises us up in carrying out his work of gathering all those who do not know him and bringing them into his new Easter life. So in your prayers for those who are lost and hurting, for your comforting of the sick and the lonely, in your support of all of our missions of the month that reach out to the poor and the homeless and the sick and the dying, you do lay down your life so that with us they too might be raised up into Christ. For strength to carry out that work once again, he feeds us with this bread and cup at the table he has spread before us again this morning. So come and once more be filled with his goodness and mercy, and then go out into this week with him. For a dying and broken world awaits you.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken with the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Comforted by the promise that the Good Shepherd gives his life for us and renewed by Easter faith, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who await the fullness of Christ's Easter life. That the church may be unified in Christ, one flock under the one shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who do not yet belong to God's fold may be brought under the care of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God's goodness and mercy might overcome the terror and hatred in our world and the violence in our homes and hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we in this assembly might love this week, not in words or speech only, but in truth and action. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick, especially Marsha Kenny, Russ Fisher, Benia Went, Leonard Cross, Debbie Martin, Erica McMahon, Kathy Stein, and Mark and Jerry Tannehill might find health in the name of Jesus and care at the hands of his disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those celebrating birthdays, especially Jean Kleinschmidt, and anniversaries, especially Tim and Stacy Crozier, may be filled with grace this day and every day and grow in grace in the days ahead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That with those who have abided in Christ through death and into everlasting life, especially Anselm, Bishop of Canterbury, whom we commemorate this day, we might dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray to the Lord. God, in you we live and move and have our being. You seek us before we know your name, and you give us joy in your life. Accept our prayer of joy in being found and forgiven and loved by you. For we pray in the name of Christ your Son and in the joy of the Holy Spirit. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of that peace.
Let us pray. God, our good shepherd, you spread a table before us. We offer you the gifts of our time, our possessions, and this bread and wine as signs of your gracious love and tokens of our grateful hearts. Nourish us at the feast of the Lamb, that we may proclaim to all the world your triumphant love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Shepherding God, we praise and thank you because you gathered your flock around Abraham. And through Moses and Joshua, you brought your sheep to a place of safety. In Jesus, you came to us as a Passover lamb to take away the sins of the world. As our everlasting Good Shepherd, you promise that those who hear your voice shall never be in want, for you know your sheep by name and you call us your own, and give to each of us a place in the sheepfold of your kingdom. Sustaining God, as you lead your sheep to great pastures and guide them beside still waters, so you have led us to this table, where in bread and wine you restore our soul. Send down your Holy Spirit and restore your church through the abundance of this sacred meal. As we remember the story of your son's life laid down for us, sanctify this bread and cup and make them be for us the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, who in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Saving God, your rod and staff comfort all who look to you in faith. Search out your sheep that are lost and bring them home. When you find them in the valley of fear, gather them into your arms. When they face evil in the presence of enemies, follow them with your goodness and mercy all the days of their life. On that day when the shadow of death covers them, bring them to dwell in your house forever. Shepherd us with all your saints of every age into your glorious presence, where we shall behold your Lamb in seated glory, most holy Trinity, now and always. Amen. Alleluia, the risen Christ intercedes on our behalf before the throne of God. Let us therefore join him in his prayers, in the words he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Blessed are those who were called to the Supper of the Lamb, God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Come, for all is now ready.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Author of life, in the breaking of the bread, we know the risen Lord. Feed us always in these mysteries, that we may show your glory to all the world. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from death, lift you up and restore you to wholeness. God the Son, Jesus Christ, the Word of life, bless you and send you to be his witnesses. God the Holy Spirit, who renews the earth, refresh you in the gift of baptism this day and always. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.